السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We commence in the name of Allah Almighty, the most gracious, the most merciful. Alhamdulillah, I'm really thankful to Allah Almighty for allowing me to participate in this beautiful event during this month of Ramadan. And inshallah, I will be speaking a little bit about parenting and the importance of taking care of our children as well as parents and broader family members. You know that Allah Almighty has created us from Adam. May peace be upon him. Adam alayhi salam was created from soil, from dust, mixed with water, then given shape and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said be and he was. Then Allah Almighty created Eve or Hawa according to the narrations from Adam alayhi salam. So once the two of them were created in a unique way, then Allah Almighty decided that reproduction will be in a way where you have a mother and a father and you will have children and they will reproduce by means of giving birth. And Allah kept a special connection between parents and children. It is a unique, natural connection to begin with, inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As much as we call things natural. Remember, nature is something that was created by Allah Almighty in the first place. So for us, we may say something is natural, but in actual fact, for Allah, it was designed by Him, it was planned by Him, it was intended by Him. Imagine if there was no connection between parents and children, like some creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How would children survive? They need someone from the very beginning to take care of them because that's the plan of Allah. He wanted it that way. So there are people who have children with ease and others do not have children with that much of ease and some may never have children. Allah Almighty mentions this in the Quran. يَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ إِنَاثًا وَيَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ الذُّكُورُ أَوْ يُزَوِّجُهُمْ ذُكْرَانًا وَإِنَاثًا وَيَجْعَلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ عَقِيمًا الله أكبر Allah says to him belongs the heavens and the earth or the skies and the earth. He creates what he wishes, how he wishes. He gives whomsoever he wishes, female children only. And he gives those whom he wishes, male children only. And he gives some, no children. He doesn't give them children. In other words, They are barren, they don't have children. Or for whatever reason. Or he actually grants both male and female to some. That is Allah. That is Allah Almighty. He decides. So people would like to have children, mashallah, tabarakallah. But it is a very big responsibility. It is a gift of Allah. Ask those who don't have children. They are praying. They are making dua. Oh Allah, bless us with children and so on. Ask those who don't have children how desperately they want to have children. Then the others who just have children, it's by the way. They don't even consider it a gift at times and they are not even bothered. It is a challenge. It's easy to say, I'd like to be a mother or a father. Have those children and see how difficult it is to rear them. You have to change their nappies. From what? From the excretion. You have to clean them, you have to bathe them, you have to feed them. From the very beginning, it is a huge challenge. That's why the reward of parents is great, the mother more so than the father. My brothers, my sisters, why did Allah keep it such that we have to take care of these children? And if we don't, they won't even survive. Because Allah Almighty wants the link And Allah Almighty wants there to be a connection such that when you grow older, they should take care of you. Subhanallah, subhanallah, it's amazing. And that's why the dua that is taught for us to make for our parents is, Rabbi rhamhuma kama rabbayani sagheera. Oh Allah, have mercy on them. 
because they are the ones who brought me up when I was little. Subhanallah, subhanallah. So you always remember the favor they bestowed upon you or that Allah bestowed upon you by giving them that strength and they did it for you. Subhanallah, they did it for you. So do it for them when they're older. However, my brothers, my sisters, as you have these children, you need to bear in mind something amazing that it is your duty to give a good name to the child. Not a name that sounds nice only, but a name that has a good meaning, reasonable, decent meaning, something that will uh, identify them as being Muslim, something that will identify them as being uh, from a good family, from a good lineage. It has a good meaning, subhanallah. So when they have this identity of a Muslim from the name, they automatically know where they belong from a very early age. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ tells us, مَا مِن مَوْلُودٍ إِلَّا وَيُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ فَأَبَوَاهُ يُهَوِّدَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَصِّرَانِهِ أَوْ يُمَجِّسَانِهِ Every child that is born is born upon nature that Allah has created them upon. فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا That nature is the nature that Allah has created them upon. What is the nature referring to here? It is the connection with the maker the ability to identify, to distinguish at a certain point as they grow older and they realize, you know what? The, the uncontaminated mind of the child automatically inclines towards the belief that there is a deity, supreme maker who made me. That's what it is. And I owe my worship to that deity alone. That's the fitrah of Allah that he created us upon. Now, as the child grows older, the parents then contaminate the brain. With what? With their own ideas, with their way of speech, with their way of talking, with their beliefs, uh, which is very important, with whatever they wish. Sometimes educating them in a certain way, getting them accustomed to certain things. They learn languages from you and so on. That's the plan of Allah. When you got your phone, it was empty. You are the one who downloaded all the applications. When you got your computer, it was empty. You are the one who downloaded everything on there. That's amazing. So you look at Allah and the gift of Allah. You will realize and understand that he's given you something empty, ready to receive. You need to fill it with the best. My beloved fathers out there, speak in the correct way. Be respectful, your character, your conduct. Be dutiful unto Allah. Your children will watch you even if you don't say much and teach them. Because you are responsible, Allah will ask you about your children. Allah will ask you about those whom he bestowed upon you. You called them my children, but they were actually the worshippers of Allah, the creatures of Allah. We are all belonging to Allah Almighty. The same applies to mothers. From a very early age, watch your language. Make sure that you teach them good words, Allah, and so on, rather than immoral items, you know, immoral lyrics, immoral whatever else it may be, uh, immoral dress code, uh, distance from Allah. Those type of things are negative. We must instill in them positivity, goodness, culture. We instill in them good character, conduct, how to respect the elderly, how to serve people, community, how to understand you are one in a few billion on earth. You need to teach them that you are not, you know, you are not the only person on earth. There are so many others. Teach them how if they were to serve others, Allah will grant them goodness. Teach them the narrations of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as they grow older. Choose good schools for them, good environment for them, good neighbors for them. You need to choose good neighbors as well for your children. Because if you haven't chosen good neighbors, how do you expect them to grow uh, without contamination, when the people all around them are contaminated with the worst things. So teach them how to reach out, teach them about saving lives, the importance of life, the importance of other people, teach them how to solve problems, teach them how important it is to resolve matters, not to become violent. This is the parenting that is a requirement that Allah has placed on our shoulders. My beloved fathers and mothers, Take a look after your children, meaning look after them in the best possible way. Make sure that you understand and realize, teach them revelation. 
I mean, from an early age, we are worried more about let's educate them, let's let's give them a, a fine education, choose the best Cambridge, Oxford colleges, whatever it may be, give them fine university. That's not wrong. But did you start with the more important thing? Because your child might never live beyond the age of 15. Who knows? So all the uh, secular stuff that you taught them, it did not yet come handy. And guess what? They already returned to Allah. You know what? You are a successful parent when you've instilled in your child the importance of a connection with their maker and the importance of the connection with the rest of the creatures of the same maker. Subhanallah. Then you're a successful parent. But if you've given them all the education secularly of the globe, but they don't have a connection with Allah and they don't respect other human beings and they don't have the character and conduct of a Muslim, that lofty morals and values. What was the point of having all these children, letting them grow like wild grass? What was the Thank you so much for listening to this short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.